Dungy. Uh, most of you, I'm sure, know her husband is Coach Dungy, and um, she is just as amazing as he is. And um, she's an amazing mom. She has a lot of children. I'm going to let her tell you about it. So she has every good reason to speak into her lives about a lot of things. And she's just such a down-to-earth, real woman, and I just love her. Lauren? <laughs> and she's beautiful, huh? <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be back. Thank you for inviting me. This is two years in a row now that I get to speak to the ladies. So it's wonderful to reconnect with you. And I'd like to begin by uh, opening in a word of prayer. So if you'll just bow your heads and join with me. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to get together this morning uh, to fellowship and to explore our relationship with you and how that relationship should impact our interactions with our family, our workplace, and our community. And we pray that you'll open our hearts to hear from you, but more importantly, that you'll help us apply your word and that you'll help us find the proper alignment in our lives to best serve you and serve our families. We pray that you'll bless our time this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Well, last year, as I said, I spoke at Beautiful Moms, and I shared all about life in the Dungy household with a husband and 10 energetic kids. <laughs> and, and I think I had actually had an opportunity to be transparent with you and honest and share even some personal things. And one of the things I told you was uh, about an addiction that I... I have and that I've been battling for quite some time. Um, my addiction is one that um, I confess that I've had for at least 15 years, and that is that um, I'm addicted to J names. And I've got <laughs> Jamie, Jordan, Jade, Justin, Jason, Jalen, Jaden, and Jayla. So those are all the kids, or some of the kids, not all of them. And just getting their names straight, that's a major accomplishment for me. So I'm proud of that. But even more proud, ladies, because we have a new addition to the family since we last met. Um, we now have a beautiful, simply awesome 10-month-old uh, 12 passenger van. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a chic, shiny black Nissan 6000. Now, Tony, he makes fun of it, he laughs, he calls it unflattering names like the milk truck and the black paddy wagon, but I love it. It's a perfect addiction, addiction, it's a perfect addition for our family because we can go anywhere that we want, anywhere where the parking garage has a nine foot clearance and allows us in. But the only problem that we have now is everyone knows who we are, and we, we can't sneak around Tampa. When we come barreling down the streets, everyone knows they're the Dungies. There they are. Um, ladies, there's an uh, old saying that you've probably heard, um, one that um, I love. It's, it's that a picture, it's worth a thousand words. And um, that's why one of our family traditions that we love is to dress everyone up in matching clothes and take a Christmas picture. And there's also another saying that, that is also true, that things are never as simple as they seem and as they appear. So as you glance at the picture up there, everything looks great, everyone is on point, they're smiling, color-coordinated, hair is done, and you might even be sitting there thinking, what an awesome-looking family, they look great, they're really put together so nicely but I have to tell you that's the finished product and if you knew all the drama and I do mean drama that led up to that meeting to that moment you would be amazed first of all my oldest daughter Tierra she had to fly in from New York and wouldn't you know it her plane was delayed so she called from the airport in a panic, screaming in the phone, 
don't take the picture without me. I'm coming. I want to be in it. And I said, we'll, we'll, we'll wait for you. Then my husband, bless his heart, he decided on picture day that he was going to cut the boy's hair. So there was a lot of tears. There was a lot of pleading. I think some of the boys were actually hiding from him because they know his uh, barber skills are not exactly the, the best. And they kept saying, we want our hair cut by a real barber. But he tackled them and took the, 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 did the haircut. And then picking the, the right moment to dress baby Jayla. That proved to be disastrous for us. See, I wanted her to be dressed. I wanted her to look adorable and sweet. And so everyone would say, ooh, look at her. But I dressed her five minutes too early for the picture. And you know, you ladies know what happened. I think there's still white spots on her dress from the spit up that she contributed to the picture. But, but the biggest challenge was my oldest son, Eric. Now, let me give you a little history on him. He called me back in October, and he announced that he wasn't going to be in the family picture this year. He said he was too grown to play dress up, and he wasn't feeling it. And he said he had had enough of my matching outfits. I get carried away. I even go into the spring you know, with Easter. I think Debbie will tell you I've done all that. So he said, I I'm not doing it. But don't you ladies know that 30 minutes before the photographer arrived, Eric texted me and he said, I guess I'll be in your picture. So where are my clothes at? Like, like I just happen to have a, a suit, you know, sitting in the closet waiting for him. So I had to do the mom thing. I had to jump in my car, run over to Steinmart, and literally snatch the mannequin's clothes off of him, <laughs> ran home, put them on Eric, threw him in the picture, and said, smile, everybody, and act happy. So I have to tell you that the Christmas picture was so close to never coming off. But you'd never know it. When friends get the card, when they receive it in the mail, I'm sure they thought, oh, the Dungies, they look great. Another wonderful picture. But no one knew what went into getting all of those Dungies positioned right and smiling and in proper alignment. And so ladies, that's what I want to talk to you today. How do we as moms handle that difficult process of getting in, staying in, proper alignment, proper balance? You know, when we go to parties, when we go to social events, even when we came here maybe, um, and you meet people for the first time, one of the, the questions that you're inevitably going to be asked is, so what do you do? What's your place of employment? Where do you work? And I think people might be asking, so what are you doing with that degree that you earned that took you five, six years? Or what are you doing with the, the loan money that you have that you haven't paid off yet? But we as moms, we tend to clear our throats and almost tell them apologetically, um, you know, gosh, I... I really don't work. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm a stay-at-home mom. And I always think, well, you know, like, like there's some shame to our game. Well, let me tell you, I don't feel guilty. I'm proud to say that I'm at home. I think it's the toughest job in America. Yes, that's right. And there are a few uh, CEOs in the country who work the hours that we do, that put in the time that we do, that troubleshoot, that make everyone happy. And it's, it, it can be overwhelming, but we do it, and we do it well. Well, let's just take a moment and look at my schedule for a moment and um, see what I'm, I'm up against. So Thursday, I was running between flag football with my two sons and basketball practice with another one. And they were, of course, at different churches, so I'm running down Dale Mabry and down Ehrlich trying to get them there. The next day, I had a 12-month checkup for my 15-month-old daughter, so I was three months behind on that. <laughs> a lot of ladies can relate to that. And then I had to take Jordan. Um, he's 16, but he's my baby. I had to take him to the dentist to have his wisdom teeth extracted. And then Jade, Jade was invited to the prom with a, a special friend. And I'm thinking, shouldn't I be there? Shouldn't I watch her? She's being escorted in, looking all pretty. But I was at home with Jordan because he was recovering from his procedure. 
Well, the very next morning, Jordan woke up, he was refreshed, he was rejuvenated, and he insisted that he was well enough to go to the fishing tournament. So off to church we went for the fishing, and that was fun. I don't know if he even caught anything, but we had a good time. And then Jason and Justin, they, they also had activities that day as well, basketball. So it was really crazy, and I'm thinking, whose event do I go to? And of course, Tony was out of town, so <laughs> it was all on me. And, and I think this is just really insane sometimes. What do you do? And, and that doesn't even factor in um, the emergencies that we have, like when uh, Jalen doesn't make it to the potty in time at preschool and they call me and tell me he needs clothes. There are no clean clothes in his bin. You need to bring him up right away and I'm gonna rush up there. Or Justin, he's in a hurry to go to school and he leaves his lunch on the kitchen counter and dashes out the door and then texts me and tells me, you gotta bring my lunch, I'm gonna starve to death if you don't bring it up to the school right now. And I'm like, but I, I'm running out the door to my appointment, doesn't matter. So of course, I love my kids and I want to provide for them, I wanna do what's right, but I also have some things that I like to do for my personal growth. I have my BSF on Friday and then some of you ladies are here. I've got my run group on Friday also. We've got Louisa and Karina and some of the other ladies. Woohoo! And we are training for Iron Girl, training for Space Coast Marathon. So, and if you other ladies want to join us, there are some empty seats on the bus. You can come with us. And um, we love it because it's physical fitness, but also, more importantly, we're doing ministry, we're doing kingdom building. Then I also have the couples Bible study on Tuesday night, studying and fellowshipping with other believers. And then of course, uh, Pastor Craig and Debbie, they're always telling us, get connected, get in that small group, um, be involved. So I'm a door greeter on the even months of church. And let's say I work in the store clerk, or store bookstore on the off months. And then I work on Wednesday nights, not work, I volunteer on Wednesday nights to lead the table discussion. So it, there's a lot of things going on. But then I also have to remember coach. You know, I gotta carve out some time for hubby. Can't forget about him. So we've gotta get some activities put in there and we've gotta do our date night. And I'm not sure when that happened last. Oh yeah, that's right. We went bike riding on the Courtney Campbell Causeway. That was our hot date on the town, and we had a good time. And I ride all the time with the running group. He doesn't ride that much, but of course he got on his bike and left me behind, so I'm like, okay, got some work to do. But my schedule is full. It's uh, hectic, and frankly, sometimes it's overwhelming. And I know I'm not alone because most of you sitting on here have schedules that are busy or maybe even busier. And some of you even work outside of the home, your part-time jobs or full-time jobs. So it's a lot going on and it can be exhausting. You fall into bed at night, you're exhausted, you're tired, but you wake up in the morning, you feel like you haven't slept at all because you're still tired, but you've got to put on those clothes and get going and get everyone else going. And it's not easy. And so sometimes I have to say that I really need to cut back. But where do I do it and how do I do it and what can I cut back on? So ladies, um, how do we make that distinction between what we need to do and what we should do and what we want to do? And I think it's, it's a matter definitely of being in proper alignment and making sure that we're following God. So what does it mean to be in proper alignment? You can look at your forms, the outlines, and that means uh, proper alignment means lining up your lives in the path that God has mapped out. That's point number one on your outline. And that means trying to do what he wants us to do as opposed to what we want. And, and that's our goal. We have to know how to realize when we're not following him and when we're not aligned with him. And sometimes it's hard to tell. To, to me, I think of it like it's driving a car. You, you get in your van, you start it, and most of the time, it rides smoothly. Usually, there's no funny noises, you don't have any jerking or jolting, the car doesn't stall out on you. But sometimes, as you're driving to school or to church or maybe just trying to escape from everyone for a few hours, 
and you get in the car, it's bumpy, it's shaky, and you're thinking, well, what's going on? So you slow down, you make a turn, and you get back on a smooth street. But the car, it's still riding rough. And the road is straight and smooth, but the ride itself is uncomfortable. And that's because the car is out of alignment, and we need to get it adjusted so that it will ride properly. And our lives are a lot like that. With all the things that we have going on as moms, when things get crazy, when they get hectic, when the ride is bumpy, it's sometimes hard to tell if it's just a stressful period we're in or if it's something that we're doing. So is God trying to get your attention? Is he trying to speak to you and tell you, tell me that we need to make some adjustments and get um, our lives back in alignment? So ladies, how do we figure it out? And I think the answer is, is pretty simple. I've got a simple formula for that. And that is, of course, by looking to the Lord. And point number two, we have to be willing to let God be our compass, to let God be our roadmap and tell us which way to go. Today, when we're trying to figure out how to get to a specific place, we have a pretty easy way to do it. Thanks to modern technology, we simply just reach into our purse, we pull out our phones, we plug in the designated location, and we let Google Maps do the work. And once that voice starts talking to us, we don't worry about anything, we don't need to question anything, we just thrive and we follow the directions. And why do we do that? It's because we have confidence, we have faith in Siri. Well, ladies, <laughs> We have to do the same thing. Boop. All right, my phone, my, oh, here we go. We have to do the same thing with God. We have to have that faith in God and his ability to get us to the right place. You know, we know that we have to hear Siri's voice, but how do we hear God's voice? How, how do we know when he's speaking to us, and, and how is that possible? How do we know when we're following his lead? Well, Jesus had some thoughts about this. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus had been invited to a dinner party. And this dinner party was being held in the home of a man by the name of Lazarus. And his two sisters were there, Martha and Mary, and they were in charge of the preparations. And of course, when you're entertaining someone so special as Jesus, there's a lot of things that you have to do to make the evening so special and, and really nice. So Martha and Mary... They're working hard. They're working feverishly, trying to make everything just right. But Jesus arrives. He comes a little early. And when he did, though, Mary stopped what she was doing, and immediately she changed her priorities. She stopped working and sat down with Jesus, listening to him as he gave advice on how to live, how to utilize time in the best way. But I have to tell you now, Sister Martha, she was distraught. Now, girlfriend was in the kitchen. She's steaming. There's all these last-minute preparations to be done. And here's Mary. She's out in the living room hanging out with Jesus. And she's really, really, really upset. But then Jesus pulled Martha aside and gently explained to her, and this is also in Luke um, 41, 42. He said, Martha, you know, you're worried about all of these details. And really, there's only one thing that you need to be concerned about. You're upset at your sister Mary, but Mary actually has got it all figured out. She understands. She knows what it's like to keep her eyes focused on God. And she's not going to get stressed out about all the things that really won't matter next week or even next year. So when I read this story uh, at first, I identified with Martha because I'm thinking, well, there's so many things in my house that need to be done, and who, who else is going to get it done? And if we don't do it, it's going to be disastrous. <laughs> but if I take Mary's attitude, which is the right attitude, how will anything get done? Who's going to do it? So I had some conversations with my Christian mentor and she's a very wise lady and told me um, what you need to do is understand what Jesus was saying to Martha. And that's point number three, that you can't do everything. 
There's no way. So focus on what's really important. Pray and ask God to show you what takes priorities. And for me, that would be my family, how my children are going to grow physically, emotionally, educationally, and spiritually. So the most important role as a mother is to protect and to provide for them, to teach them, to train them, and then to realize that I'm going to dedicate them back to God. So when I learned how to utilize my time with that goal in mind, um, <clears throat> it became very easy to understand. If some activities or programs that I was involved with weren't going to really help me or help the children and edify them in any way, then I really could do without it. I could actually take it off my calendar. And that was freeing for me. And that also caused me to change a lot of things in my routine. And it made me place a priority on all the things that were going to promote spiritual growth in my family. So really freeing. And, and as I think about some of the things I was doing, it, it's really kind of embarrassing, but I'll share it with you guys. Um, it was really crazy. Every day, you know, the kids would get up and they'd make a big mess with all their toys and trucks and dolls and everything. And every night when they'd go to bed, I would just go out there and I'd clean everything up and I'd organize it and I had it all color coded and had labels on all the bins and everything and I'd put it all in there. And then of course the next day they'd get up and they'd tear everything back up. So that no longer became a priority to me. Um, wiping the kids' fingerprints off of everything that they touch. I used to walk around with the Windex bottle and they would just, you know, the hands would just touch everything and I would like, oh, you guys, you know, you're so sweet. I love you. And I would spray that Windex <laughs> bottle and, and get it up. And it was really annoying, but I wanted my house to look nice because somebody was going to inevitably come visit me and they would see what a terrible housekeeper I was. So I, that was important to me. And, and another thing was going to every Disney movie that came out. As soon as I heard about it, it was like, okay, we got to go. We got to see this. And I get all the Disney toys that came along with it. And I thought, really, is it that important? Another thing that I thought I needed to do was to take the kids to every birthday party or every play date that they were invited to. It was just like important that they got there so that they would continue being invited and that my kids would be popular and we'd stay on that A list. And I thought, you know, really, is it, is it important? They don't have to go to everything. At school, I felt like I had to sign up for every volunteer opportunity, every time there was a field trip or the kids were doing something in the classroom, my name was at the top of the list because I wanted to be there. Maybe I was trying to impress the teacher, I don't know, or I wanted her to see how I was an involved, caring parent. But it was just crazy. But ladies, can you, can you relate? I mean, is your list somewhat similar or maybe even worse than that? So I, I say to you, like Jesus said in Matthew 6, 31 through 33, so don't worry about these things, saying what will we eat and what will we drink, what will we wear. These things, they dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father, he already knows all of your needs. Seek the kingdom of God, and above all, live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. So that has allowed me to be a better mom and to stay in better alignment with God. Now, don't get me uh, wrong, because the road, it still can get um, bumpy at times. But let me tell you, when I have those bumpy stretches, I know that when my van is in alignment, those bumps, they're only going to be temporary. And it's just a matter of time before God smooths everything out. So ladies, I hope my message causes you to reflect on your own lives and do components of your life. Sometimes do they seem overwhelming or out of balance or is there a lack of conformity and harmony in your family? Well, if you're saying yes or possibly or yeah, I've been there, I suggest, strongly suggest that you don't panic, but I recommend that you pray. Pray and ask God to plant your feet on a firm foundation and evaluate the choices that you've made and that you're making each day. And then feel, feel sure though, when they're favorable to him, that you'll have a sense of peace. And it will be just a matter of time before he brings you into full alignment with yourself, 
with your family, and most importantly, with him. So thank you very much, ladies.